God of the Bible, the God of the Bible is always, first of all, male in gender. Always. Without fail. And again, these days you got people trying to neuter the Bible and make it genderless. And, and you know, because we got these morons out there with these gender identity issues. Oh, I don't know if I'm a, if a boy or a girl or a man or what. Like. <laughs> it's madness. It, it, it truly is just completely unconscionable that there are people out there. This is even tolerated at all. For someone to be to, to not have to not be said you are nuts and you have a mental disorder, seriously, if you th if you don't know if you're a man or a woman, if you're having these types of doubts or questions, it, you you don't get any more basic than that, more elementary. Like, do you need to go back to kindergarten? Do you need to learn one plus one and blue and yellow and your colors? I mean, boy, girl, this is this is basic stuff. But all throughout the Bible, God is the male gender. So let's start when we're, we're looking at the sin of being effeminate with our appearance. Turn, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Because if God created us in his image, I believe this is referring to physically. He physically created us in his image. And there are many indications when you look at a person, just... If you look at any individual to identify whether or not they are a man or a woman, and you don't have to ask them what they identify as, there's many visible signs to indicate whether a person is a man or a woman. It's not, it's not up for debate. It's, it's, it's a fact. God has created men and women differently. But our appearance, how, how we look, you can be effeminate, men, in the way that you Look, we want to stay away from this sin of being a Because look at, and here's the other thing I want to point out. Look at the sins that are, are grouped in with the sin of being effeminate in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Idolaters. And we've talked about that this morning. You know, people who make graven image and, and, and worship them. He says under the third and fourth generation, he's gonna, you know, God's going gonna to be pouring out his judgment against those people, essentially. Um fornicators, adulterers, adulterers receive the death penalty, abusers of themselves with mankind. I'm not even going to get into what that's all about, but you know, there, there's, there's so many sins here that are listed. And he's saying, look, you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. It's a serious sin. It's something that, that God's like, oh, well, God doesn't care the way you look. Yes, he does. God doesn't care the way I act. Yes, he does. Amen. God cares about these things. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 Look at verse, start reading in verse number one. The Bible reads, Be followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovereth, uncovered dishonoreth her head, for that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed, excuse me, ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image of and glory of God. Now there's that reference again. We already saw in Genesis chapter 1 that God made man in his own image. This is being reiterated again now here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. They're saying that a man ought not to cover his head. Guess what? God cares about your appearance. Why does God care about your appearance? Because he is the image and glory of God. That's why God cares. God's created you in his image and he doesn't want you screwing up that image to everyone else of who God is.